So let's turn any 3D model into a Gaussian splatting experience. It will be super exotic today because we are not going to go classical way where we want to reconstruct a physical object that exists. But what about trying to reconstruct something out of our creativity, our minds? Meaning we take any 3D model that exists and we want to turn that into a Gaussian splatting experience, which means that we'll have to go through a middle ground, which is this multi-view capture. So in the real world, for the data, we can generate it either with a creative process or we can generate it from the capture process. Today, we are going to focus here to generate creative 3D data sets. Usually, we can start with a 2D sketch and try to make that base for a 3D model. And then after we move that to the 3D Gaussian splatting or we have directly the 3D model. So this scenario is super interesting because it will allow basically to make Gaussian splatting anything. Any data set we will be able to turn that as a 3D Gaussian splatting with the pipeline that I will show you. We can set that up within more or less 15 minutes. That means that I did some concession on the setup, so less coding and a bit more using existing software. But there is a bit of both actually. My idea was let's try to see if we can turn any model into a Gaussian splatting experiment quickly. So what you will need here is Blender to handle all the rendering pipeline. We could use Python directly, but with Blender it will be much easier. So to get Blender, you just go onto the Blender website and you download the version that fits you best. Once you have Blender installed, what we will want also is PostShot for now. It will handle the Gaussian splatting part. It's in beta testing at the moment I'm talking and you have it from the Joe set plus shot uh, plus go shot okay so this is a website where you will uh, get your hands on to post shot and it will allow you to basically from a set of images create Gaussian splatting experiment so to create Gaussian splatting experiment we need a multi-view data sets best is on top if you have the pose of your camera so at this stage I will show you how to extract both but we'll just use the images for now to make sure that we can also recreate some kind of a spherical way to generate data set which are pretty handy and of course to do that we'll use Python and to be able to leverage the Python Blender API, we need to have Python 3.11 and above. So what we want from the 3D is then go into multiple view generation. That is the big chunk that we want to attack and this will be done fully with Python. So once the multi-view is done, we will be able to move on to other stages, especially creating the 3D Gaussian splatting experiment. And this Python will use Blender. And to use Blender with Python within the Blender API, and I will show you right away how to set that up. So essentially, if I tap uh, CMD, I have my Anaconda, which is installed here, and you see that I am in the base environment. So let me Conda um, list. This will showcase all the environment I have at the moment, and normally you should see one Blender. And in this specific environment that I created, I specified that I wanted the Python version uh, 3.11 once I installed it, okay? So now I will activate it, Conda activate Blender. If you don't know exactly how to set that up, I will share a link about how I set up my environment very, very easily with Anaconda. So now you see that you are into the Blender uh, environment, isolated. And in here, what I did is pip install uh, the Blender API, which is called BPI. And if you do that, it will install the Blender API that you will be able to do control Blender with it. So. This is essentially the setup. You have some other libraries that I will show you. I use an ID here, which is Spider, if you are used to it. And these are the dependencies that I use. So Blender API, MathUtils, NumPy, JSON, and ArcPass. So essentially, ArcPass would be useful if you want to have kind of a interface using the common line interface. So someone can then use whichever thing that you are developing with a common line. And this is what it looks like. So if I open here, if I wanted to launch my script, this is what I would do. So I will launch Blender from my directory. I will make it happen in the background. I don't want to open the full software. And then I will call Python with a specific script. My input file 
how many views I want to generate, the resolution of each view, and where I want to save that. So if you want to check the result of what I'm just showing here, it's more or less one example of the renders that I get with my little Python experiment. So if you want to replicate that, I need to explain a bit more what's happening under the hood. That's also one uh, great point to mention one person that I really like the content of, and it's Oli Utunen. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but he's a, a Finnish guy that is an enthusiast about 3D, but other, thing, other things as well. And he created a little piece of add-on for Blender that you can buy on Gumroad that allows you to create what he calls the camera array tools. So essentially generate um, some kind of position to after that use for Gaussian splatting experiment. So this is in a way similar, except here the approach is fully automatic. So we don't want to use an interface to position everything. And I will give some kind of a framework or pattern to generate the camera position. And as you can see here, this is more or less spherical. So if I were to put that into a post shot, you can see that what I generate is one position on the sphere. And I have a parameter, which is the number of position. So this is very, very, very handy because you will be able to have the perfect camera distribution either for creating training data or for generating new assets. So it's not only tied to Gaussian splatting. You can also use that to have a 3D model, generate multiple view, have an AI model like object detection or semantic segmentation work there and back project anything that you had on the model from the images to the model. So you just need this bi-directional link. So this multiple view generation with the Python Blender API, let me get quickly into it. I will do another video, a deep dive into that, um, but it's all already part of the Courses 3D Reconstructor in the Academy. So as you can see, I have six steps, especially five main steps. And the first one is where I set up and initialize my scene. So I will initialize my Blender scene. This is how I call any function and methods from Blender. You see bpi.ops.object.select. And then this is how you will construct what's happening within Blender without actually using Blender. So it's not too far away or really exotic. You, you, you can master that pretty quickly. Then I will set up the rendering setting. And in Blender, the way you render on the screen is by using some engines and you have two that are very cool it's called eva and uh, cycle and in here you can use one or the other and you will see that you will have some differences in quality but of course one big impact is also the resolution that you will have and all the setting attached with your image and something that you can see here is that i actually want to generate with alpha channel background so that you don't have anything in the background that could be really worrisome to generate then your Gaussian splatting experiment. Because if you remember the Gaussian splatting experience, once you have your multi-view generation, what you do is you go through a uh, structure from motion framework usually, where you try to generate a sparse point cloud from this multiple view that you have. And then once that is done, you have a bundle adjustment that will match really, really nicely all the camera position. And after that, classically in photogrammetry, you will go into dense matching, where for each pixel in an image, you will uh, find the matches in other images and generate uh, depth prediction. And with Gaussian splatting, this dense matching could be done like always, but usually we just use the result of the sparse, maybe a bit augmented point cloud. And from that, we generate the Gaussian splatting, which is instead of having a flat point, we have an ellipsoid around it. And that's more or less what we want to have. This is very short. Of course, if I want to showcase the pipeline in 15 minutes, I cannot go much into the details, but you have a lot uh, on the academy for that. So what happens is once we set up our environment, we will move on to the model. And here we want to load our model. So any 3D format, I have three um, in here, then you will center and scale your model. This is what I do here. And after that, we'll generate our uh, camera positions. This uh, calcul optimal camera distance. This is really just to know where we'll put like the radius of your sphere, if it's a sphere. 
And you can see that based on the pattern that you have, you, you will have different way to generate your camera position. And after that, it's only a matter of creating your rendering pipeline, one single view, and then making that multi-view and using the CLI with arguments where you can pass anything that uh, I showcased here. So before is I have this 3D model, this OBG 3D model of an elephant, okay? What do I do is I have it positioned in here, my model attached with the material library and the texture. And all that I do is in my Anaconda, I will call Blender background, the code, the model, how many view, maybe here we will want uh, 60 view. Oh, sorry, I'm in the console. I will make a resolution which is a bit below 1024. We may be doing 60 views. What other parameters did we had? If you remember, I mentioned that we could have also the pattern. So if you want to test another pattern, we could test that right here. Pattern um, uniform is by default. We could try and do the spiral. Okay. Up, views, right, spiral. And after that, if we want to use another engine, uh, by default it's EV, but I will show you. If I put engine for now, we'll do Blender EV. and we generate uh, in maybe my renders live v1 or, or live ev and I press enter and here we will call blender pattern invalid choice spiral choose uniform spiral ah yes okay so i see why i just need to pass in the string with that i mean the Little quote around, and this it is the same here for Blender here. Enter, and this should work hopefully. Yeah, and you see that now for each frame it's generating uh, the rendering. I just print out some elements because this is very handy for me for debugging. What I wanted to do here is really show you the work in progress and how I usually work live. And at the end I will make a full video, but this may be very handy for you to to get the sense about how we can work quicker. So now. If I go into my render live either, normally we should have, yeah, we should have pretty much many views, which we can run another post shot version from scratch. And I will not import, but I could import the position, as you can see here. These are the intrinsics of my camera and, and the pause information. I would just drag and drop and use the um, motion estimation uh, directly from and compute from the images to show you the time it will take. So this is also very handy, uh, as you can see, because you can test various ways to generate uh, the image, uh, let's say tracks, where <laughs> you, you can see what works best when you have too much coverage, not enough coverage, because for all the SFM part that I mentioned here, and the dense matching, you need to have usually a high level of overlap, usually 80-85% to have something that is very good overlap in all directions. So this is something that is not ideal, but you can see that we can still retrieve our uh, Gaussian splatting data set. Now, from that, all we have to do is save it. So here it's the model, but if you want to export the scene, range and field, you export as PLY. So, elephant in progress. And then you can use uh, this specific tool, which is called Splatter. And maybe this is another step that I can show. So the multi-view is done and we pass that to PostShot. This is what we did to do the 3D GS. And this is with PostShot. So of course, the alternative is to code the Gaussian splatting with Python and the base code is from the INRIA, so it's also in France. You can get the codes there. It's a license for non-commercial use, but then you have variants uh, where you can use Gaussian splatting that evolved with time, but this was the base one. So 3DGS, and once you have the 3DGS and the export, let's bring it live. And for that, uh, we want it to put on the web to share 
kind of a first project and see how it looks like. And for that, you can use the website called uh, Splatter and you can upload a model in here. So the PLY, so I would just choose my file in progress, uh, elephant in the room V2, uh, and it will be unlisted. So then you have a little progress bar and at the end you will see that you can manage your Gaussian splatting on the web. You can also use that with uh, Cloud Compare, which is another software that I mentioned before. Uh, I have other videos to do that, all which is around it. But I think it's very interesting here to see that you have a way to generate multi-view data set from 3D data. This is super handy for a lot of middleware, let's say. It's not a, a full software as a, as a whole. So this is the spherical generation and we can check a bit if we have something better or not. And this is the helicoidal. It will be interesting to, to have a comparison. So you know what I will do? I will actually compare both. This is a, a little uh, cherry on top. Elephant helicoidal. Um, I already loaded in Cloud Compare the first one. I have another tutorial to do change detection, so I could use that, um, which should work. And I will just bring in, okay, so just X, Y, Z and the elephant in the room as well. So this one will be purple and the other one will be green. Yeah, okay, purple and green. Okay, um, they are not aligned, both of them. So let's align them pretty quickly. That should be enough. So let me try to do an ICP. Uh, I will not adjust scale. In this case, it looks like I'm good enough. And let's see. Uh, it's good, but uh, I need to adjust scale as you, as you see. So I will have to adjust scale as well. Yeah, okay. So this is much better. We have something that is more or less on top of one another. And from there, uh, we should be able to do a cloud to cloud distance. Uh, and that's it. Compute. Okay. The difference is, is held here. And you can showcase normally the Scala field. Show histogram. Yeah. Cloud to cloud distances. So it means that we have something above three centimeters, but it's not metric wise. It's still interesting to see that you have some kind of differences between the two point cloud. I will stop here the mumbo jumbo. This was just to show you that with two different configuration, you see that I guess from the helicoidal, because this is the helicoidal, you are missing some components. We could take the ground truth, which is this one, put it to scale and see what we have. And this is normal. You have less point of view here. So it's not as, as precise, let's say. Uh, with the reconstruction engine in your set post shot. So here you have it, the complete workflow to generate 3D Gaussian splatting experiments in more or less 15 minutes. Uh, I went a bit overboard. You have then at the end, the online view of your Gaussian splat. You can just have an up direction of minus Y, set default view, and this is something that you could share and you have your elephant. To adjust after the rendering um, that you may have, you have the ability to use a different rendering engine. So let me show you what that means. If I open my um, multi-view generation, you have my render. This is not with cycle or maybe with cycle and this is with cycle. So it's a bit better with cycle usually takes longer, but you have a better resolution, you can also augment with AI each independent view or before the 3D model. So there is a lot of place to experiment. I just wanted to make sure that you had the base for that and understand how we handle all of that to go web and laugh. I will shoot later on a perfect video and tutorial on the Python part to generate multi-view data set with a bit more control and refine the code a bit more because right now it's development code. All right. Hope you enjoy that and see you in the next video.